the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Good afternoon, everyone. It's quickly turning into a warm and muggy day out there. Just how warm are those temperatures going to get? And are we still expecting rain and storms later on? We'll have your forecast in just a bit. And changes could be coming to a metro near you. How you have an opportunity to make a change. And later, after more than 5,000 cars were reported stolen in the district, we talk with police on how they plan to tackle the problem. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us at noon. I'm Liberty Zabala in for Mark Hall. And you're taking a live look at the district. We started our day with lots of sunshine, but we could see rain on the way and it felt a little bit muggy out there, Damon. Yeah, it definitely did, Liberty. I mean, we had to, the cooler air this weekend, but it felt like summer trying to make a slight return today, at exactly. least. Exactly. I definitely could feel it on my hair, too. Yes. <laughs> and we want to get rid of that feel if we can. We're starting to get deeper into September. And it looks like we might by the okay, end of this week. But still more rain. I, I'll, I'll need my umbrella. Yes. Yeah. It looks like the rain's not going to leave us alone just yet either. We have a little bit of activity rolling in later, but there is a good look at those temperatures right now. We're already jumping into the 80s. It's 84 degrees in D.C. at this hour. 84 as well in Manassas. You're finding a little bit of cooler air back off to the west where we do have some 70s in place across the Shenandoah Valley into the Allegheny front, but those 70s will quickly turn into 80s in the coming hours. And on top of that, we are starting to get that more tropical feel, that mugginess back into the air. Some drier air is still left over out to the west, but right around D.C. into southern Maryland. Yes, two points are jumping up into the upper 60s and lower 70s, giving us that tropical feel out there this afternoon. So just be prepared for that, folks. It looks like as we we go through the afternoon and evening. Any of those showers and storms, they will hold off through the rest of the day today as our temperatures jump up to the middle and upper 80s. We won't start to see any shower and storm development until later this evening into the start of the overnight hours. And folks, with some of that activity tonight, we could be talking about the threat for some heavier rainfall and any sort of stronger storms that develop. So we'll time out when you can expect to see some of that soggy, stormy weather later tonight and we'll let you know just how cool and crisp the air is going to feel later this week. That's all coming up in your full forecast in just a bit. All right, thank you, Damon. We are definitely looking out for that cooler weather ahead. But right now, police are searching for the gunmen who opened fire near a school in Prince George's County, killing a teen girl as she was walking home from Duval High School. Prince George's County say the shooting happened just before four yesterday near Woodstream Circle and Palomar Drive, right around the corner from the high school. Officers say a fight broke out between two groups, and they say a 16-year-old girl was then shot. Police are working to see if she was involved or just a bystander caught in the crossfire. Now today, school officials are offering mental health and grief counselors on site, as well as speeding up steps to increase security. They should have counselors definitely here for the kids because that young lady is friends of a lot of people that go to that school and they need somebody to lean on. They can't get them in all schools fast enough but when they definitely get them in there, hopefully they will be useful. Um, that these kids don't find other ways to hide guns out here in the street. And just into our newsroom, police have identified the girl as 16 year old Jada Medrano Moore, and we'll have more on this story coming up. WMATA is also making changes to its 10 year strategic plan. The plan focusing on joint development in the city to help with economic growth. Our Lex Juarez is outside the Brooklyn Metro Station with what one of the sites the plan is focusing on. Well, before any changes are made here at the Brooklyn Metro stop, WMATA wants to give the public a chance for them to give their input. They're going to be hosting a meeting tonight that's going to start at 6 o'clock with an open house, and then they will start with the public comment period at 6.30. That's going to be at the Luke Seymour High School Auditorium here in Northeast D.C. WMATA plans to discuss their opportunity and option to change the bus loop here at the station. They also want to re 
relocate the kiss and ride lot and consolidate the exit. Now, these changes they say are meant to improve bicycle and pedestrian safety, but they also want to open up this space for housing and retail to come and build in the neighborhood. Well, there are three virtual opportunities that people have to listen in. They can call in or tune in live on YouTube. They also will be able to go back on Metro's website and rewatch the archived video. And if you're not able to tune in or um, come out tonight. The, there is that option to watch that archived video. WMATA is still going to be taking public input until next Friday, September 22nd at 5 o'clock. So you have a little more than a week and a half to submit your input and let WMATA know what you think about these plans here at Brooklyn Metro Station. In Washington, I'm Lex Suarez, DC News Now. Thanks, Lex. A wait list is now open for people in Fairfax County interested in applying for affordable housing. Income eligible households can apply through Rent Cafe until Sunday. Eligible households will be chosen at random to join the wait list and they will have a chance at living in one of four available properties. The properties are in Alexandria, Herndon and Centerville. A candidate running for Virginia's House of Delegates is being accused of performing sexual acts in live videos on a pornographic website and that candidate is Democrat Susanna Gibson. Screenshots of Gibson were shared with the Associated Press. Her campaign issued a statement denouncing the sharing of the videos saying they violate Gibson's privacy and the law. Her race could be important in determining the balance of power in a closely contested General Assembly. Gibson says this will nearly neither intimidate nor silence her. And developing now, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. According to our partners at The Hill, the inquiry is based on the House GOP's investigation into the family's foreign business dealings. It will be led by House Oversight and Accountability Committee Chairman James Comer. McCarthy said he did not make this decision lightly. DC News Now will have more coming up on the news at four. In the district, the number of stolen cars in D.C. is skyrocketing. New data shows a 110% increase in car thefts this year. Our Marielle Carbone has been digging into the data. It was quite the welcome in the neighborhood. Only two weeks after moving from Shaw to Bloomingdale, Raul K says his wife witnessed an attempted carjacking. Yeah, it was scary. So to hear auto thefts and carjackings are up in D.C. isn't entirely surprising. Our car had already been broken into a couple times when we lived in Shaw. According to D.C. police data, 5,005 cars have been stolen so far this year. And that's up 110% compared to the same time last year, when about 2,400 cars have been stolen. Carjackings are also up with nearly 700 year to date. In every single ward, cars are being stolen. That's a concern to me. Denise Krepp is a former ANC commissioner in oh, yeah. Ward 6. Oh, it says that criminals think that, you know, they can steal cars, they can take the tires off, they can rob people. To prevent becoming a victim, MPD recommends investing in a vehicle immobilizer like a smart key, parking in well-lit areas, and getting a steering wheel lock. You know what it says to a person like me who got a lock? Please get a lock because we're not going to prosecute. Krep wants to see more accountability. Tougher laws. Hiring more police. I'm glad that we, we drive a pretty bad car. As for Kay, his family is taking precautions. We tend to keep the car closed. We tend to keep it empty. Reporting for DC News Now, I'm Marielle Carbone. And a driver in Henrico County, Virginia, got an unwanted paint job yesterday morning. It happened after a truck driver lost control, releasing barrels of paint all over the car and the road, which you see right there. One eyewitness says the truck sped through a red light before swerving and slamming on its brake, narrowly missing the car. Now, a painting contractor says you should wait to clean your car if this ever happens to you. It's surprising you don't see that every day, um, but that is a that is a big mess up. You don't want to try to wash it off because it can be an environmental issue. Yeah, that looks very difficult to clean off. AAA says most comprehensive plans will cover this. Insurance experts add you should take pictures and file a police report.
And basketball fans in Frederick, Maryland now have a new name for their new professional basketball team. The team has decided on the name the Frederick Flying Cows. That's after the team announced they would choose between finalist names like the Howling Dwyo and the Brew Bears. The team's owner, Michael Witt, says the new name is unique to Frederick. While reception from younger fans has been positive, some older basketball fans say the name could use a little work. Yeah, my initial reaction is a little bit of laughter. I'm not going to lie, I feel bad, but it's going to be my initial reaction. We want something that is entertaining for the community and for the fans, for kids. But Frederick is also a, an area that's on the move. It's changing rapidly, so flying kind of fit. It's a cute name. The Flying Cows will be holding a tryout for anyone living in the D.C. area next Saturday, the 23rd, and that's at Athletic Republic in District Heights, Maryland.